Okay, now we're going to do um, variables in C++ Builder. So we're going to go down here. We're going to do uh, the multi-device application, blank application. We're going to kind of use a standard uh, button, um, label, and uh, edit. Okay. And this is going to be a little bit, if you watch the uh, the one in Pascal, this one's going to be a little bit different. Um, variables are a little bit easier in C. Uh, but the first thing I have to do is talk about scope. So uh, the first thing I want to point out is this form uh, contains contains a label, an edit box, and a button. So it's like it's 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 parent. And um, you know it's it's also like an onion. So the the form is the outside of the onion and it contains all these things that are inside of the onion. So why is this important? Well let's click on the we're going to double click on the button. It'll create our code for the button event. And what I want to point out here is that, um, you know, I can create a variable in here and that variable will not be seen by the form because of this onion scenario, right? It's on the inside of the onion. It can't see outside. However, if I create a variable under the form, um, under the form, then it can be seen by the the button, the edit field, and the label. So again, this is called scope, and this is just important for where you create your variable. So if my variable is only needed by the button, put it there. If my variable is needed by the button the, and the label, then I need to put it somewhere else. So again, that scope is kind of important. So having said that, what is a variable? The variable is, uh, it's a container. So you can think a cup, like a coffee, coffee cup, coffee mug. You can think um, a drawer. You can think a, a house or a garage. And for computers, they want to know what type of information you're putting in that storage space because they have to know how to act with it. And so it's very important to use the right type of variable for the right type of information. And you know, it, numbers are always unique, and we're going to go over those. But the key is if, you know, if I have a garage and I try to park my car in a drawer, it's not going to fit. There's going to be stuff left out. And same thing with code. If I write a lot of code to a little bit of space, um, it'll write over other data, make the application unstable, can cause security issues, and all kinds of other things. So uh, again, just to sum up, uh, storing variables in the right um, size space is pretty important. So uh, there are a few of these that are pretty common. These are the ones we're going to go over. Um, so we're going to start out with an integer, we'll call it uh, i, and just put a semicolon. And so an integer is like a 1, 2, uh, 3, and it can be negative 1, negative 2, and so on. You're, you're going to see that it's not a, uh, a decimal. A decimal is a double, and so that's like a 3.2 or a negative 4.5. So those are kind of the two types of decimals, um, are numbers. And the, the thing here is when we did uh, int i, integer i, what we did is we allocated space for an integer, and that goes into memory. 
and then we call that memory I. So we don't have to uh, recognize uh, or recall the big long number where it's stored. It's just I. That's how we refer to it. And the computer takes the I and says, all right, I know where that is. And it goes and gets it, right? So what we're doing here is we're allocating space. Um, and here we allocate a space for a double. So now let's go down to our button. And um, we're going to say that uh, when we press the button, you know, label one tax, uh, I think this will work. It's not the best way to do it, but uh, I'll show you. Uh, it's going to be equal to I. And um, so we're not even taking it out of the edit field. We're just going to automatically take a number here. And the only thing we haven't done, we've defined space for an integer. And we're saying that we're going to show this integer in the text of the label, but we haven't told uh, the space what integer to hold. So we're going to say i equals 5. Okay, so we've defined some space. We've stored something in that space. We're going to look up what's in that space, and then we're going to add it to the text field. I'm going to see if this works because I'm, I'm taking a shortcut, and I'm wondering if it'll work. Let's see. And it works. I didn't, uh, wasn't sure, but uh, it worked. All right, so now let's talk about um, something else. Uh, and we could, you know, we could put the D in here, double. Let's see if this one works. So that's different. That says O. Oh, we, and we didn't sign it. That's why. Let's see if this works. And that works. Okay. Again, I'm a little bit surprised, but that's all right. We'll talk about that in a second. So uh, we've covered uh, kind of numbers here. Um, let's cover characters. So there are two types of characters. Uh, and um, These are individual characters, uh, not a string of, of characters, uh, not a sentence, but individual characters. For a string of characters, you use string. All right, so the label uh, text, uh, this, this text field, it has a type, um, meaning it's suspecting or it's looking for a specified type of variable. But that text field in and of itself is a variable. And you'll, you'll see this here in a second. Um, let's do, let's do character. Let's put something in that character space. I can't remember if this uses, I'll use one. All right, let's use two. Property access result and set it. All right, so let me stop this. Ah. Does it want to capitalize? Let's see. 
No, where are the errors? All right, so it doesn't like doesn't like our character. Let's go ahead and do s. Oh, no wonder. Uh, I should have put an equal sign there. You get to see coding in real time. Hello world. There we go. All right, real world troubleshooting. Um, Just try this out for the character. Incompatible type. All right, so let's talk about, this is a good time to talk about this. Um, so I mentioned that label, uh, the text field is actually a variable. And I was playing fast and loose with the numbers before because the text variable type is actually string, right? Um, and uh, it did an auto conversion in the background. So it doesn't like the character because it wants to show a string. So it, that's the incompatibility type. So um, the, the thing that you run into is for this edit box, if I put a number in this edit box, and then click on the button and go to the label. The number that I put in this edit box is a string. It's not a number because this edit box only sees string. So um, let me give you an example. Um, so I'm going to say label, label one dot text equals edit one dot text. And in this case, this text is a string and this text is a string. So if we run this, it works because this is a string even though it looks like a number and this is a string even though it looks like a number but if i tried to do something like um edit uh one I tried to add the number that we put in there to let's say I, and I'm gonna move this down here. I know this is getting a little complicated, but we're gonna show you about type conversions. So if I do this, So it took five and added another five to it, making the string five, five. It didn't take five plus five, which would be 10. So we can see that's a, that's a problem. So now what I have to do, this right here is text, and we need to convert that to an integer. So there's a function, and we're gonna go over functions later, but there is a int to no string. We're starting out with a string to int. Let's 
So we're going to get this text, pass it to this function, which takes a string and converts it to an integer. That'll give us a number. We'll add that to i, and then we'll put it in the label. And you see that makes a huge difference. That gives you a correct answer where the answer before is incorrect. So let's just summarize what we've done. We've uh, defined two different types of number variables, integers, which are whole numbers, and decimal place numbers, which are called doubles. Um, we worked a little bit with a character. The text box did not like that. Um, and then we work with strings, and the text box is a string, so that worked fine. Then we put our uh, variables into the label. Uh, it automatically took the number and converted it to a string for us, so we didn't have to do anything there. But when we wanted to get the number from a text box, we had to specify that, hey, convert the string to an integer so that I can do math with it. And then that, that worked. So there is some type conversion when you're going from strings to numbers and uh, back and forth. So we'll wrap it up here. And the next one, we're going to go into uh, functions. We'll do some uh, classes and some other things that can help you out. OK. so. Um... I kept looking at what was going on with the character. Um, I found a couple things. I think user single. And then um, I commented this out and I ran this. So in theory, this looks like it should work, but it won't. And I'll show you why. Um, w w what I found is it kept highlighting string, even though I'm trying to do a character. And I didn't notice this, but up in this up left-hand corner over here is a little character. And that should not, I don't know why that's there. Uh, that was just a, a typo on my part. So now when we do button one to bring up the character, it does it, so it works. But there was just that little artifact up there. I couldn't even see it. It was uh, smaller than a normal character, and I just noticed it. So I wanted to highlight that, yeah, the character does work. And uh, somehow I had put that little thing in there, and uh, the string was working fine, uh, but character wouldn't. So uh, just an update there. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.